What's going on, guys? This is Eric Swanick from Swan Hockey. Today, I am joined by Hearst Lumberjacks General Manager and Vice President, Jonathan Blier. Jonathan, how's it going? Not too bad, Eric. How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for coming on. Um, for those of you here that are new, this is completely interactive. Ask your questions. Join the conversation. Don't be shy. Um, let us know where you're, where you're commenting from. Those of you that are joining us on Facebook, remember, depending on your privacy settings, we will not be able to see who you are. We'll see your comments, but it may come across as anonymous depending on what your settings are. Um, for those of you in the junior hockey or junior hockey Facebook group, I posted the, the settings and pinned them to the top of the group so you could change them there. So and again, for, for the guys that are that are new here, this is all about community. We're working hard to grow the community here. Um, I'm very fortunate to have a great network of people in this game, coaches, general managers, industry professionals. And I want to open that up to you guys in this setting and, you know, just open it up to you guys, let you guys benefit from it, ask your questions, find out some things that you might not, you know, normally find out about. Um, we have our discord channel, uh, sorry, discord server, um, that you know we're uh, just uh, getting that going. For those of you that aren't in it, you can find the the link on the Swan Hockey website, SwanHockey.com. And uh, yeah, it just, there's a lot of great stuff in Discord. If you're new there, we'll help you out with it. There was just uh, we just updated the server today, so those of you that are in it, it will be a little bit different now. But um, yeah, that's enough of that. Let's get let's get into it. Um, yeah, Jonathan, thanks for thanks for joining us. How's uh, how's the uh, how's the springtime up there? Ah, oh, not too bad, not too bad. Keeping busy with uh, the daily job, like as a, I'm a school principal in the day job. So, uh, and then I'm uh, GM, uh, GM and vice president for a junior team, coach for a U18 AAA team. So yeah, I'm pretty busy here. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it sounds busy, and I think it, you know, and I think that's um. I think that's, you know, I think that's interesting. Like the, the, you know, that you're a principal of a school, right? Like, I think that that kind of changes the dynamic in which you, you know, what I've noticed that, you know, just the way kind of things are running Hearst and, you know, you know, that, that kind of stuff. I mean, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Like what the, you know, like what you guys are doing there, there's, you know, people here that, you know, are going to watch this and, you know, we're watching now that they might not be too familiar with Hearst and the NOJHL. And, you know, I put up before in a, uh, today on Instagram, I think it's I think it's one of the most underestimated, you know, leagues out there, and um, you know, one of the, maybe one you know one of the most misunderstood leagues out there. Uh, for sure, like I think we've evolved over the years uh, a lot, uh, Eric. Like, uh, and uh, we've joined the league in uh, in 2017. It's actually uh, probably people will know him. It's actually Claude Giroux that uh, bought the team for the community, and then we uh, we. Um, created a nonprofit corporation like Claude didn't want to be the owner. He just wanted to buy the team for the community. And we wanted to, we really wanted to build it that way. So this way was a, a team like for the player and for the community. So, so this sure. way, when a player came in, you know, we're, we're taking care of them like family. That's, that's our purpose. You know, like uh, we want to have student athlete. Uh, uh, we want to create good hockey players, uh, great hockey players, but at the same time, we want to create leaders or leaders in life, leaders uh, off the ice, uh, you know, so, so they can go back in their respective communities in their life and, 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 and be, uh, um, and, and get involved and be, uh, be, uh, be good citizens and stuff like that. So it's more than just uh, hockey. It's, it's the whole package. And uh, that's that's the way we created it. That's the way we wanted it. And uh, like in a matter of the, the first year, we almost paid 500. And we, we had about a, a, year, a month and a half to recruit because we got the, the team very late. And uh, the second year of, of our existence, we won the league. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, we did very well. And then COVID hit for two years. Uh, so we didn't have any playoffs. And then the year after, we came back. We went all the way to the finals uh a, a game away again from going to the nationals and then the last two years we've we've done very well like uh we're one of the top teams in the league but uh unfortunately uh we lost to a very good team in the in, in the first round in powassan but uh at the same time we got hit by injury last year and this year uh we 
uh, we met a very good goal thing. I met a very good goaltender. So uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a great run. Uh, we believe that every year that we go in, uh, we can win the thing, and that's that's a culture we want we want to create. We want to create a culture where um, the player can benefit as an overall package, but a, cu a culture that you're a winner uh, and in every aspect of your life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. When, when Claude bought the team, was he yeah. with, was he with the flyers at that point? Is that why the team colors yeah. are the team colors? Yeah, he was with the flyers. And that's the reason like a lot of our, uh, of, of what we did does is around what, uh, to, to, to pay tribute to Claude. Uh, we, um, first we, we took the colors of flyers, uh, second, if you look at our, our logo, uh, you'll see that the lumberjack has like, uh, he's red, uh, red hair and he has a tattoo of a foundation he created. Oh, I never, uh, I, never and, I never realized that. Uh, or, tattoo or I never, put it, never put it together. Yeah. A foundation he created in hers. And then if you look at the, at the threes of the logo, it's, um, we, we have like all our minor hockey teams are called the lumber Kings. And okay. the, the Lumber Kings have been very big in our community for 50 years, over 50 years. Uh, so we wanted to pay tribute to that. So we put the, the, the threes behind um, uh, the, the, the player as a crown of the Lumber Kings. Okay, that's cool. So that's that. like everything was taught as far as the logo goes, uh, just to, to pay tribute to the right people, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, that. that... That's awesome. That's awesome. Did you guys ever think you're going to win the league the second year? Uh, no, we, you know no. what? We didn't think that, but at the same time, uh, I was very, uh, like we wanted to go get a good coach and a good GM just to kickstart the program. And, uh, we got that in Mark LaFleur back then, yeah. uh, Mark, yeah. uh, you know, Mark, like he's, well, that, 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 that's how we met, right? That's yeah. how we met. And you know, exactly. yeah, exactly. And then Mark, uh, Mark was a, an assistant coach with uh, one round of Huskies uh, when Andre Turini was there, uh, who coaches now the, the Arizona Coyotes. And then he was um, an assistant coach in Batters with Jason yeah. Clark, who's now uh, in the Anaheim organization uh, uh, and the affiliates uh, with Anaheim. Yeah, so. uh, yeah, it should be San Diego. Yeah, with San Diego. So, you know, like uh, Mark has been around the game for quite a while. And you know what? He... He brought he kickstarted a program and he brought the le this legacy uh, of of being a winner and uh, we yeah, continued sure. uh, with that with Mark Alain, who's now our coach. Mark Alain is actually Claude uh, Claude's cousin. Uh, I didn't Alain. I didn't know that until you told me yesterday. Yeah, I didn't and know Claude, that. Uh, and, and Mark Alain, he's passionate about the game. He's a guy that you know what he, he's there for the players and he's uh, he's learned a lot to, uh, under Mark because he was uh, Mark's assistant back then. And uh, you know what? Uh, we're uh, we're lucky to have him. And uh, he's he's played the game too. He played major junior. He played U sports. Like he played at different levels. So uh, he knows the game. And uh, he he studies. Not only that he knows the game, but he studies the, he studies the game all the time. So he he's always trying to evolve, which is which is what you're looking for in coaches and 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 players. Because in the end, the game is changing so fast that you you want to keep up. You know. Yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. Games, games constantly changing. And, you know, it's an interesting, you know, it's an interesting point, you know, bringing up Marco Fleur, like obviously that's how, you know, that's how you and I met was yeah. through Mark, um, you know, cause you guys brought it, you know, Lumberjacks brought in Mark to coach and, you know, it brings me back, you know, to the original point that, you know, when we we're first starting the show is that, you know, the community aspect of it, like, you know, like I, you know, over the years, like I've invested in people, not necessarily teams, right? Like people. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then, you know, Mark and I had a great relationship. He was, you know, Mark's, you know, one of the best coaches I've ever dealt with. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then you guys, you know, Lumberjacks bring in Mark, right? Yeah. Now, 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 you know, now I'm sending players to the Lumberjacks, right? And, yeah. and you know, and, and it's just, yeah, it, you know, it's, it's funny that that, you know, like, obviously that's what, you know, brought us all together. And that's, you know, I just wanted to drive that home to, you know, everybody that sees this is just, again, the, the community aspect, you want to be involved with the right people. And oh, exactly. Like, exactly. Eric. Like I've played the game. I've got involved with some good people and with some not so good people, I'd say. And in the end, uh, that's the reason why I'm doing it. You know, I, I do that as well. I'm actually the only GM that does it uh, 
as as being non-paid <laughs> in our league anyway and i've been i've been offered to to be a gm for other teams but you know what i i do it for my home community i do it because i love it i love the way we're doing things there and you know what we're doing the right thing for the player and for me that's the most important thing because in the end it's about giving back for me and it's about making sure that we provide the right opportunities to the players yeah no for sure and uh, you know it, it you know it shows i mean you know can like win and you know win a championship you know in the second year and then you guys went to the finals in the dudley um you know if i remember correctly you guys lost to who it was oakville yeah uh, right? no we guys uh, lost the, the, yeah to oakville in the dudley yeah uh, which had like it was what a uh, two nothing game but uh very close we touched what two posts that game yeah and I, I think o o o oakville had 12 guys that played in uhl that year too yeah so, i think they had it was something crazy they had like 10 losses all year in the oj yeah. and then you guys and then I, yeah i think you guys all if i remember correctly you guys lost two nothing but the, the second one was an empty netter you guys yeah it was two, exactly. two nothing with the second one being an empty netter yeah. you know which is just you know and then our yeah. goalie, our goalie back then, uh, who, who, yeah, Ta Talarico, Talarico, yeah. uh, you know, he was five foot seven. Nobody wanted to take a chance on him. Yeah. He won the league MVP, the Dudley Youth, uh, the, the uh, playoff MVP, uh, the, the uh, Dudley Youth MVP, and ended up at uh, Adrian yeah. College. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he, yeah. Mark, Mark told me he that year he could have run for mayor and he would have won. <laughs> like, Probably, he, you know. Like so he said that the town, what, that, that the town loved him and everything and. And that's what's fun about it. You know, you got about 5,000 people in hearse and you get to play off and a thousand people are in the rink and, and cheering for the Lumberjacks. Like how many places you go, you'll get that, you know, like yeah. a fifth, a fifth of the town is there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like, it's uh, like you, you go there and you're like a mini, uh, call, call it whatever, mini Philadelphia flyer, mini Montreal Canadian. Yeah. Uh, like a celebrity like, within the yeah, town. And, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. a, it's a unique experience, you know, it's, um, and it's, it's very like the, the people are welcoming. They, they love the lumberjacks. They love the players. And, uh, you know what, at the same time we created a culture where we bring in good players, good people too. So, uh, that's, that's very important because then uh, they get involved in the, the, the bill of families and uh, they, they become a part of the family. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I, you know, obviously, as you know, like I've been a big fan of the league and down here in the United States, like, you know, there, there's people that obviously try to deter a lot of players from going up there. Um, you know, they, you know, tell them different reasons and everything. And, you know, like, you know, me, like my experience has been great. I mean, you know, there's, there's one year that, you know, it was like two kids off my summer team that played in the league, like, like, uh, like went major junior or two yeah. of them went to the BCHL. And it's like, what, what's not to love? Like I had a, you know, I had Logan Fredericks that, you know, played for Mark and uh, in Kirkland Lake and, you know, Logan went up there as a 20 year old rookie and put up, I think, I think he put up 89 points that year. Um, you know, he was a, a, he may, he may have been a goal a game player. He may have been one goal shy, but I think he was a goal a game player. And I don't know if anybody's put up more since, but, you know, went up there as a 20 year old rookie played committed to Wisconsin Stevens point, which is, you know, one of the yeah. best division three programs there is. He won two NCAA national championships in four years with Wisconsin Stevens point and then played pro hockey. He was playing in the ECHL, went over to England and like, yeah, exactly. what, what, what's not to love? Like, you know, like, again, like just my experience has, with the league has been great. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, like there's, there's, you know, there, there's and, a right way and a wrong way to do everything. I mean, you know, but if it's done the right way, I mean, like, like I said, like my experience has been great. And even two years ago, if I'll, I'll, I'll just go back to that, Eric, uh, two years ago, uh, like I told you, we were winning three nothing in the finals, and we we ended up losing four three against uh, the Thunderbirds. But the Thunderbirds uh, had a player, a sixteen year old on, the, on that team, who was a fifth round pick for uh, the Sioux uh, the Sioux Greyhounds. So he played with the Thunderbirds as, as a sixteen year old. Then the year after, he goes to the Greyhound, makes Team Canada, U uh, eighteen team, and then. And uh, ends up uh, being drafted in the second round of the NHL, forty uh, second overall by Detroit, uh, and that's a year after he played in our league. Yeah, so. yeah, 
Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, you know, there's a lot of guys, you know, I find that the league, you know, is very, very able to launch guys to the next level. And like, you know, and, and obviously, in it, it, you know, obviously in the United States, there's a big focus on NCAA movement, right? Like that's, that's a, a major, major focus down here. And a lot of, a lot of people tell, you know, tell the players like, Hey, the, you know, NOJHL, they don't get as many, you know, NCAA commitments, as you know maybe some of the teams and you know in some of the tier three leagues and whatnot and you know on the surface it can be true depending on the organizations that you're looking at but mm -hmm. what people don't realize is everybody just looks on the surface and then that's it right but what people don't realize is you know so the NOJHL you guys are limited on the amount of 20 year olds you could have on your roster right what yeah. it's eight is it eight yeah it's eight yeah and depending right, on so, years, uh, you get more and you get less. Like last year, we had five. Right. But, you know, so, I'll, I'll give you an example, Eric. And if you talk about, like, let's say, you know, D3. I know D3 um, uh, commitments, most of them are, are at 20-year-olds. Well, that, that's yeah. exactly what I was going to say, right? When do most players commit D3? At 20, I mean, right? So you guys, yeah. yeah. So, like, let's say you guys have, you know, five 20s on your roster. You can go 100% and still yeah. not have as many as – what some other you know teams are able to project and not taking anything away from the other teams. It's just not a fair assessment when you're, you know, it's kind of like you're, you know, you're, you're kind of comparing apples and oranges a little bit. But like I said, like to tell you the truth, Le, every kid, since I've been a GM in any way, I can tell you that every kid that are eligible to go received offers from D3 programs. Every, every one of our 20 year olds, like the ones that are, that play major junior, they're not eligible. So, right, right. Then there's that uh, whole group of guys that want to go so, major junior. So, so, so we're not like, so let's say uh, we take one this year out because he played major junior. And then we take another one out uh, because he went full time to uh, a Canadian university and then ended up doing his degree and has no interest in going. So like we, right. we can't control if, if a kid wants to go or not, but if you want to go, you'll have the opportunity. That's for sure. And you know what? Uh, it, there's been some good stories from some of our players. So it's uh, in the end, that's, that's what we want to do. And even then some, some kids wanted to go use sports. We try to provide them the opportunity to go there. Other kids wanted to go to OHL. And we even had a kid that had a D one offer on the table and, and he, de he decided to go in Charlottetown uh, to play um, um, with uh, the Quebec major junior hockey. League. Yeah. So, so in the end, it was his decision. Like, yeah. Uh, so that's what it is like. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's something that's very much overlooked, at least down here in the United States is, you know, you know, players and parents, they don't know some of these, you know, some of the rules and then how that affects mm -hmm. what the roster is doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, and again, like a lot of the Canadians might not get great school packages for division three. Right. So financially, it might weed out a lot of players. Right. And, you know, you might have guys who rather go use sports or, you know, like you said before, you might have guys that, you know, they want to go major junior. If they wanted to go NCAA, they would, but they want to go major junior. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's just, you know, that's just something that I definitely wanted to touch on because I think it's important that people know. Right. Again, not taking anything away from any other leagues or anything. It's just important to understand how, you know, if you're an American, you know, especially if you're an American player, you know, to understand how, the yeah. CJHL and Hockey Canada system is different than what we have here. And at the same time, we'll work for the player too. Like, it's not like, okay, you come to us and then uh, we, uh, we're we glad that you're here and you play hockey. No, we're going to work with, with the teams in the States. Wherever you want to go, we're going to work towards that and try to promote you too. Uh, so that's also something we do. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and guys, again, if anybody has any questions, just – Post them, you know, just hop right in. Um, as far as development go, like that's big also with us, uh, Eric, because it's, we talk about the games, we call it, we talk about stats, but the most, the most important thing is like games for us are evaluation of how you improve, how you, how you do things. And then you got practice time. And it's important to know that like we practice every day, but not only one, one of the great perks about hers is, it's mainly, it's mainly like um, you have access to almost like a, a major junior team, where 
every kid can go on the ice from nine, uh, nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. Like there's free ice right there for you. So if, if you want to go two hours to work on, on, uh, your one timer, your pivot or walking the line as defenseman on the power play, or, or, uh, you want to do some rims or you want to do, uh, yeah. like, so you can do, you can go there and just work on that on top of practice. So it's not everywhere that you can do that. Uh, and, and you can do it in hearse and, uh, and we, we take good pride and we make sure that we, we keep that with, with the town, because, you know, we're always negotiating with towns for ice time and all that stuff, but that's part of it because we want to make sure that it's there for the players. We got the strength and conditioning coach at the gym working on programs with players. Then we got the chiropractor that will take care of the players. And we got like everything set up from a, a to Z to make sure that, uh, when the players come here, they're well treated. Right. Yeah. There's a high standard that players can expect. And, you know, that comes along with, you know, with playing tier two junior A hockey and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, what, what do you got? What's your, what's the fan average there? I know it's usually. Well, it's around 700. It depends like, uh, and it always depends who we play. Uh, sure. when we, when we play a team that, um, we beat most of, most of the nights, uh, then you, you get a bit less fans or, but, uh, and that's, that's something that, uh, and sometimes it's, a, let's say a team is, is weaker that year. And, and the first few games are blowouts then the fans are not going to come as less, but mainly overall would be average of 700 around yeah. that, that, that numbers six to 700, I'd say. Yeah. And then playoff time, like you said, it's usually hitting. Yeah. It's, it it's a thousand usually. Yeah. No, that, that's yeah. No, that that that's awesome. I mean, it's a you know, I know you know players that I've that I've sent there have you know enjoy, enjoyed their time and whatnot. Um, yeah, no, that's great. And why don't you talk a little bit about the you know again, just you know, trying to educate people like in terms of the recruiting process for you guys, right? So it's a little bit different mm-hmm. than some of the other you know, some of the other leagues that people are used to, like, why don't you talk a little bit, like, yeah. you know, about it, the it, it depends from team to team. Like some, te- some, some, le- uh, some teams, some leagues will do a rookie camp and then they'll do a, a second rookie camp and then they'll do a main camp. So this way you got like about three camps before maybe having a chance at making the team or, or being part of, of that team. And, and, and even then sometimes you won't, you won't be sure. Because then there's the main camp can can last for a month, but uh, and it depends from league to league. Like and for said. and for the, the guys in the United States, in Canada, main camp is what we call training camp. Exactly. Yeah. So in, at the end of August, so when so when says it could last a month, that's what he's referring mm-hmm. to. So um, and then in 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 as far as as us being so far away. You know, like like we're far away, but I find that we're a diamond in the rough. It's a great place to play, and it's a place that when, once a player comes there, he understands what we're talking about. But you, you, for me, it's hard to judge a a um, a team when you haven't experienced it or you haven't you don't know enough about it, and you just look at the map and you say, "Oh, these guys." They're really up north, <laughs> yeah. but and being up north changes the way we recruit too. Because, like, if you're from Toronto, then you're gonna host maybe a a summer camp and then a main camp uh, in the fall. And and I understand that, and people will go because everybody like are around Toronto. And not only that, is you're also uh, like the states are not too far from Toronto, so it's easier to run a camp and and maybe have 150 kids or something like that. And it's worth it's worth doing it. But um, if we're in hers, I'm, I can't ask the, the players to come, uh, like most of the kids from Toronto and, and, and all these places, to come all the way to hers because, you know what, they have choices. Okay, I, there's so many camps that weekend. There's this, there's that, there's that. I'll go to the camp uh, with the Toronto Junior Canadians instead of going 10 hours north, you know? <laughs> so, right. So really, in the end, you, you end up being in competition with every junior team. And not only every junior team, but every showcase, because showcase are are, are, are becoming more and more um, are a, a place of choice for the players, you know? Uh, yeah. Where, where a lot of... of 
of scouts will be there and then they'll make their decision based on the way they see them play either at uh at the tp in toronto at the chowder cup at uh like any any tournament that uh i'm just trying to, to name a few but every tournament that are held every year and that uh players players attend so we rather do this that way right now because for us we'd have to move almost all our staff everything 10 hours from home and the cost of it would be very big and at the same time we wouldn't show what we have really right there because it wouldn't be our rink it wouldn't be our room it wouldn't be anything. right they're not so, getting the, the so they, they're not getting anything except a camp so for us, I'd rather have like the interviews, like I talk to, to advisors, we watch videos, we watch tournaments, we watch all kinds of stuff. And then we do uh, individual interviews and then we get from there and then we get commitments. And when I commit to players, uh, to a player, I fully commit. That means you're coming in. If I tell you, you make the team, you made the team, you're coming in and you've made the team and you come to main camp and you're on the team. Um, so that's what it is. And then there's a few that we just bring to main camp and there's going to be a few players battling for the last few spots at main camp. Uh, and we always have a few exhibition games and stuff like that. So that's, that's pretty much the way we run it. And I would say the, the, the reason why we run it that way is first, we don't want to waste the players at any time. And at the same time, we're very far away. And a lot of times the other thing that might happen is from year to year you you might be looking like for example this year I'll be I'll be looking for a goalie uh probably anywhere from uh 3 to 4d and then uh 5 to 6 forwards you know so so basically that's and from year to year most of the team will be looking to about that amount of players um so because you got your your guys returning you got a few guys that are going to move on to other leagues you got a few guys that are too old a few guys that um and some years you're gonna need more and other years you're going to need less depending on the age of your team and it's for me it's about being honest with the families and telling them the way it is and one thing i say all the time to eric uh to, to the families eric i said Yes, there is spot on uh, on the top four. There is spot on, on on the top six, and there's 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 a spot for for starting goaltender. But at the same time, you got to earn your way there. Like I, I'm not gonna tell you, oh, you got that spot because I'm gonna I can be I can end up being a liar if you don't perform. So right. I don't want to lie to the kids. I want to make sure that you know what this is what you get. Like you you gotta be honest. Yeah, I've, I've, I, like I said before, I've dealt with honest people. I've dealt with, with not as honest people. And for me, it's all about being, being fair to the kids, uh, telling them uh, what I think is right when we talk to them. And and you get to to have a feel from the people you're talking to. Like in the end, if if you feel good about me and you feel good about what I'm telling you, then yes, you might choose our organization. But if you don't feel good about and you feel it's kind of sketchy, then you might want to choose something else, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and at the same time too, like it's important, like, you know, one thing I've said before is that, you know, players have to be able to self-identify where they're at and accept where they're at and, you know, work their ass off to get better. Because if you, if you guys look hard enough, you will find somebody that'll lie to you. And we'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, you're going to be our starting goalie or, you know, no matter what. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, you're our top guy, power play, everything, right? Like, if you guys look hard enough, you will find that answer, right? And a lot of players, you know, I find they self-sabotage because they hear the right thing. And then they hear the right thing again. And they just keep, all right, who else can I talk to? Who else can I talk to? They just keep talking, talking until one person says what they want to hear. And it's like, oh, that's it. I'm going with that person's advice. You know, we're going, you know I'm going to play there. Um you know, so it's important for you guys to be able to, you know, everything's performance based. That's one of the biggest things that I talk about is performance is king. You got to perform. Everything's performance based. And, you, you know, like a, a lot of guys, they have to just un, under, you know, understand that. And 
Yeah. It's performance based, and you're right, Eric. But at the same time, you gotta have some sense of loyalty, and you have you you have to be. Oh, for sure. Pay, what, I, what I'm saying is like, player, but you're you're right about yeah. what you're saying. Like I said, but like I said, for me, I don't want to quit on a kid uh, two weeks in. You know, like I don't want to bring a kid and two weeks in, I I I quit on him. Not not with the type of technology that we have today, yeah. and how we can look at videos and stuff like that. Is it possible that the kid might might start on the fourth line and for some reason he, he's not improving and he doesn't regress? And then a month and a half in, we got to say, you know what? Like, that's basically where you're at in the lineup. And if you want a better opportunity, we can work with you and try to find that because in the end, we want to work for you. Like, I told you that I'd bring you as part of family, but... If, 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 if my son is in that situation and you want to make sure that and, and he wants something else because he feels that he might need something else in terms of his personal um, a personal um, um, agenda, like, yeah. OK, we'll do that. Like, we'll, we'll try to help you. And that's me. That's my promise to the player. Yeah. I will help you. Yeah. And, and, what I, and what I was referring to with the performance base was, yeah. you know, what you were saying, like, hey, like, you know, you come in here. Yes, you're on the team but now you got to earn where you are on the team, right? Like you're not going to promise some power play time. Like that's got to be like, no. it's performance based. It's got to be, you know, if you're, you know, you got to perform. Um, yeah. But yeah, we got a question here um, from Robert. Do you scout tournaments like the Northeast Pro-Am pre-draft showcase? So I didn't... He's asking basically what, you know, what tournaments are, you know, your go-tos it, or, you know, whether it it's a on... person. It depends. There's some tournaments we go in person. I didn't go to this one personally, but I mean, we always got people looking all over. Like I, I know people from all over. I know Eric. I know uh, all these guys that are going to, to tournaments and, and, and we have some scouts here and there and, uh, and we will scout a lot of tournaments and we will have a few players where, Hey, here's, here's, here's uh, that list and name that I have for you. And that's basically what, what we do. So, yeah, and it's it's funny. So that that tournament, the Pro Am Pre Draft Showcase, that's the tournament. So you know, I'm, I'm bringing a team there this year. Yeah. Um, you know, in the past, I've brought teams, and Mark Lafleur coached my teams there yeah. one year, and that's actually, yeah. that's actually where he met Logan Fredericks. Like, so Logan was playing on the team. Mark's coaching after it was like after the first game. Mark's like, I love that kid. I want that kid. I want you know, and and you know, Lo Logan loved Mark, and it was just you know they you know Logan wound up you know signing you know I guess it was you know June, yeah. June first the cards come out so Logan wound up signing and but yeah Robert like that's and you yeah you asked me to go there to coach this year too and uh, yeah. but unfortunately I'm 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 uh, I can't go there at that time because of my job I have some stuff uh, going on with my work but uh, like I know some people will be there and uh, if there's uh, if there's players that are uh, are interesting for sure we'll look at it. Yeah. Yeah. No, those tournaments can be very beneficial. Um, you know, just like anything else, it's gotta be used the right way. Right. Depends on the team that you're playing on and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, no, it's a very good question, Robert. Um, yeah, guys keep, keep them coming. Like, you know, anything you guys want to know, just ask, like, again, this is, you know, for people that are new here, you know, it's why we do it live. So it's completely interactive. There's no question that's stupid. Just, you know, if there's something you have a question about, um, you know, any, you know, maybe some of the behind, you know, uh, I guess, quote unquote, behind the scenes rules, like, you know, like we were talking about the 20 year old rule. Um, why don't we talk a little bit about imports? Yeah. So you guys are allowed what? Six imports, six imports. Yeah. And those imports are American players. Yeah. And this year it was different. You guys were, were you guys allowed uh, one, one I'm player from, from Ukraine? I'm uh, yeah. They, they were, you we were eligible for two, if I'm not mistaken. Two. And did they count uh, as part of a six? They would count as part of the six okay. if we if we would take any. Uh, some t some teams did, some other teams didn't. Like we didn't we didn't have any, uh, just because the situation didn't arise to have any. And you know what? A lot of times we have near six American. This year we didn't. We had like three or four at, at times. Uh, five, five even at, at one point, uh, but we ended up uh, with I think three in the end. Um, so no, like I said, and and like there's a few players that came to me, uh, Eric, and you know that, and you know after two months they said, yeah, John, like maybe I'd like to go somewhere else. I, I, I'm not sure. I said, okay, where would you want to go? 
I said, and he said, and he gave me a few teams and he said, okay, or could you look for me? I said, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I'll do that. And, and then we finally ended up uh, finding a few teams. I said, which one do you want to choose? You know? And, um, and for me, it's, it's about doing it right by the kid. Like I said, it, I, I could go out there and there's, there's some guys that will go out there. Oh, you got to pay this for that kid and that for that kid. And, but you know what, in the end, I'm not going to lie to the kid and I don't want to send him to a place that he doesn't want to go. You right. got to send him to a place where he wants to go. And, and you know what, the kids have a choice in this, you know, it's, it's their future. Uh, they trusted you to make the right decisions by them. So in return, you got to give them some power on what they want to do. Sure. So, and, and by, by rule, the players have a choice. Exactly. Like a lot of players and a lot of players know don't that. know that. They don't know <laughs> that. The team say, hey, you guys yeah, yeah, yeah. sign this paperwork real quick, right? You guys, yeah. you guys oh, yeah. have a choice and you need to you need to know that. Um yeah, you got you, right, you we got a rule. A we got a rule on that. And yeah. hockey Canada, we got a rule. So any players that get traded gotta sing uh, gotta sign a trade consent. Yes, and then if, and the, if when that's it's straight consent, it's not obligated. You don't have to sign it right. if you don't want to go there. <laughs> that's yeah, right. And then, and then to take it a step further for the American guys, I'm pretty sure I'd have to look it up to verify it, but I'm pretty sure that when that trade consent form comes, if you circle no, I don't consent, you're free to go back to the United States. That's your release, right? I, and it's I, I'm not sure about this one, Eric. Uh, but yeah, even I'm, even then, I'm, like I'm pretty if, sure if they go if they go to the United States and I didn't pay like for example I didn't pay any fees for the players and he comes to me then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask for a fee if he goes back to the United States that's unfair to the kid you know some teams might do it but I won't just be uh, out I, of I think I think it's more than some teams might uh, I mean <laughs> just out of principle yeah. like for me principles are important respect is important like I run with some values and if uh, the day that people ask me to not run with these values I won't be there anymore <laughs> so yeah it's basically yeah. the way I, I do it you know yeah yeah yes yeah. so, all right so Robert's got a couple of Robert did we meet at the NA combine this weekend? Your profile, the picture on your comment is very small. Um, so I can't tell. I think it's you. Um, but yeah, let me know. Um, so Robert, all right, so Robert said 2005 American goaltender looking to play junior. Our, oh, yep. It is, it is the same Robert. What's going on, Robert? It's great to meet you. Met a lot of really great people at the, at the North American league combine in New Jersey last week. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, uh, Robert, and this is, this is a great question. Robert wants to know, are costs similar to U.S. junior? So to, um, preface, to preface that, so Robert, obviously the USHL, there's no tuition. Um, yeah. NA, there's no tuition, but you pay your own billet. NCDC, there's no tuition. There's a small league fee and you pay your own billet. And then tier three, you're char they're charging. It's typically, you know, I'd say around, you know, I'd say around ten thousand dollars US plus billet to play tier three. But a lot of those tier three teams, they're even higher now, more maybe more in the twelve thousand dollar US range. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to preface that kind of give anybody here that is not sure on the payment structure in the US, that's what it is. Um, yeah, now, Jonathan, take it away. So, so, so it depends from teams to teams. Uh, it's not every teams that are charging the same thing um, because we, we got player contract and all that stuff. But for example, for us, the way we structure payment is uh, we have a billet fee for, for um, there's a billet fee just like in, uh, in most of the league in the States, except the USHL. And then uh, there's uh, also a, a league fee which the league fee is about uh, around 1500 and there's a showcase fee who's 500. So that we have to give to the league. It's, it's there's no choice. And then we have a, an equipment fee where you get like five, like you get a, we get everything at cost. So we charge around 15 to 1700 for, for the, um, the equipment. But if you go buy that at, at, at the store, you'll probably be 25 to $3,000, you know, uh, and then we, um, and then we have our team. So it's, we get that we're, 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 we're 15, um, 
yeah, 15, 35. And for us, it's about 35. The, the yeah. league, our yeah. team fee is 35. So it's around 7,000. Uh, but yeah, it should be 7,200 if I'm not mistaken. But, but, but Eric, if you come for a second year, then we get a rebate. And if you come for a third year, then you get a bigger rebate. So you know, like there's there's deals that are are being made out of loyalty too. So so let's say you play as a second year, it might cost you. I'm, I'm just gonna give you a number. You might have twenty five hundred uh, off your your regular fee. So like from from our fees. Sure. So um, so we take less, and uh, and uh, just to be loyal to the kids. That's the way we run our team. But it's not it's not everybody that is this way. Uh, we've 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 decided to do a structure where we we do it that way, and then um, another team might be twelve thousand all the every year. I don't know. Like another team might be six thousand every year, but most of the team are around the range of between, um, I'd say around the six seven, like around there, and and that that fee includes everything, right? It, it includes a chiropractor, it includes the, uh, all your ice, all your, your your meals on the road, it includes the busing, and, and you we run by like we have the best coach in the league, like letter seating, all that stuff, and, and the coach, uh, um, and then. Uh, it includes uh, the strength and conditioning coach making programs. It includes uh, everything. So, so it's yeah, pretty that, neat. yeah, that's awesome. And you know, our American friends remember that's Canadian money, right? Yeah, it's that's like, Canadian that, money. That, that, that probably works out to be like what, like high five fours? five, five like thousand four, probably. 48, yeah, forty eight hundred, five thousand American. Um, yeah. You know, yes, yeah, so like it's 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 a big difference, guys, and it's something that's why you know it. it you know, blows my mind that more Americans don't consider, you know, going up to Canada and, you know, and playing. Um, and like I said, if a second year a player and then, and then there's a, and we, and like I said, we, we've made a chart about who gets what. And if the, if the kid played major junior, then he gets a rebate. If a kid was a, an affiliate with us as a U18, he gets a rebate. Like, so there, there's yeah. different things that we do this way just to be, loyal to people and yeah 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 we got a compliment here for jonathan nice to hear a coach be honest um yeah so that's awesome it's from a anonymous user so again anybody just joining us um if you're commenting from facebook we will only be it depending on your privacy settings we may or may not be able to see your name so if we don't address you by name we're not doing it on purpose we just cannot see your name you could adjust the privacy settings um, if you're in our junior hockey group on Facebook, I've pinned the post to the featured section of the group. This way you guys can adjust your settings if you choose to do so. Either way, maybe you want to hide your name, right? You could do that too. Um, Shannon wants to know, she says, an import player, what does the process look like to be able to play in Canada? I'm guessing they would need a special visa. So before we get into that, Shannon, I want to also let everybody know that you have to be in your 18 year old year or older to be imported into Canada. So this year, 06's 2006 birth year are the youngest that are able to be imported into Canada as Americans. Yeah. And in every sanctioned league. Right. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so like I said, like if I recruit a Canadian, then you, you got, we have a form where we got to fill on the form. Then we send that, um to our league and then the not only our league but the team wherever you were let's say you were uh uh with car shield i'll i'll give it a program okay and then you y- your coach there needs to sign that release and and then but they always sign and then we we fill out this the form and this then for, we, this for an american you mean right yeah from an american yeah, okay. let's say i recruit american and then um, he, same thing. Like we we've done some with uh, with Eric from the, from New Jersey kids. Like uh, somebody played with the Titans, for example. And then we sing the form. Then the Titans sign it. And then uh, we um, we we fill it out with Hockey Canada, USA Hockey. And then the kid can transfer. 
and you sign a, 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 a player contract, an HCR card, which is a Hockey Canada registry card. So you sign like more than one paper, but one important paper is that transfer from the States that we have. And it's a role, it's a transfer role between Hockey Canada and USA Hockey. And then um, the team, some teams in the States might charge a fee. Some other team might not. And that's why I said earlier, if if we get charged a fee, usually if he transfers back to the States, then we'll charge the exact same fee. Uh, if I'm not getting charged a fee and then he wants to transfer to the States, we're not going to charge any fees because it just, I, I, I just, I call it a gentleman's agreement <laughs> really in the end. Um, um, so in the end, that's what it is. And, the, and, and if, do you need a visa? You don't need a visa to come to Canada. But you need to um, to make sure that you have proper health insurance to make sure that you if if things happen and stuff like that. So usually, what we'll do as a team is we'll we'll explain to the the parents what you need to have to uh, to make sure that uh, everything's okay and even to make it easier because a lot of a lot of times that the banks don't work together in the states and Canada. So we, we, we use the transfer either through credit card or stuff like that. So the parents will pay the team. And then if we need, we'll, we'll pay the billets for the, the team. So this way it's easier. It's an, it's an easier process and the parents lo love it more this way. So we got Robert. Robert, can you elaborate? You said a, a, he wants to know if age out is the same. Robert, are you referring to finan financially? If you could elaborate on that a little bit. Um, yeah. And then the other thing I want to, you know, another important thing to remember guys, especially as the Americans, if you're coming, you know, if you're going to Canada to play and you're an age out and you're also an American, you're taking up two spots on the roster, right? So you, you better be ready to play. And that's, you know, like, and maybe talk about that a little bit, Jonathan, about like, you know, kind of the decision-making of who's on the team, who's not right. It's like, as a, you know, as a, you know, as a, as a American going up or as an age out, you know, first let's take the American example as an American going up, you're, you're compete Like you gotta be one of the six, you know, one of the uh, six best players that a team, that a team could find. Like, it's not just you against your other position. It's you against, so you, know, you, you gotta you gotta be one of the six best and same thing for the if you're an age out you gotta be one of the eight best now if you're both if you're an age out american you know you got like i said you better be ready to apply well I'll, I'll give you yeah for sure because you got six you got six american spot and you have eight 20 year old spots so really this year for example if you want to play uh junior in our league this year you gotta be a, the the youngest is going to be all fours uh, the, the oldest, I mean, all fours. So O trees are not eligible anymore. So right. really, that's that's what it is. Um, but you got eight and six. So yes, yeah, so you got to be pretty good. Like last year, we had we had a kid from the states, uh, um, from uh, Uniontown, uh, who came with us, uh, Adam Boucher, and now he's going to go play in the. Uh, Southern New, New Hampshire for a D3 program there. Um, but uh, you know what? Uh, he came to us, uh, was a very good D, steady Eddie, I call him. And uh, yeah. you know what? He, he did great. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a great year for, for him. And then uh, he decided to, do, to go uh, to uh, Southern New Hampshire. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And a great example of a NCAA and then yeah, uh, yeah, there's other kids. That. Sometimes there's one year. Uh, that's true, Eric. It's important to call it because there's one year there was a kid like we had six American, and then we 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 unfortunately there's a guy that came in and was a high guy, and and we had one guy that didn't have like he was a great player, but he 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 was our six American at the yeah. time. Now becoming the seventh. And we loved the kid, <laughs> right? But we couldn't keep him because he was the set, like he was the sick, and and he was ahead of some players 
that were on her team, but we just couldn't keep it because of that rule. So what we did is we found a great team for him to finish the season. And then the year after he came back to us because he loved it in hers. And then the, the, this kid uh, ended up uh, when COVID hit, he ended up playing in the States. Uh, I don't, I don't know, I'm not sure where, but he ended up with a D tree too. Again, like those yeah. teams uh, and sometimes that ha- it, it rarely happens, but it happens sometimes. Um, and like, I, we were just honest to the kid. I said, we love you. Like we want, we want to keep you, but the problem is right now we can't. And, and same, like the same thing happened to Canadian kid who was, um, who was an, a, a last year, a last year player. Like we said, you know what, like we love you and stuff like that. But in the end, we're kind of stuck. And, and now you're going to be in a situation where, you're, you you might end up being out of the lineup, so we want to make sure that we do right by you too, as a twenty year old. And uh, and he he said, yeah, okay, thanks for being honest. And so we're we're gonna work with you. And we found we found him a team uh, near home, and uh, he ended up having a, a good finish for his twenty year old. And in the end, you, you want to make sure that the kid finished with a great experience too. To... Yeah, for sure. And and guys, it's just so important to you know, keep all this kind of stuff in mind when you're, you know, pursuing teams this summer and you're, you know, spending money and time to go to camps or whatnot. You know, a lot of people could wind up wasting a lot of money and time because they, they don't know these rules or that, you know, and same thing, like, you know, I mean, you know, the league, you know, like North American hockey league, they've got an import rule too. Right now it's the other way around, obviously it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, Canadians and Europeans, um, you know, USHL, they've got an import rule. They have a, they have a um, 20 year old rule, you know, so it's, it's important to know these things about the different leagues. So you can, you know, kind of come up with, you know, so you could attack properly this off season. And it's the same thing, Eric. Sometimes you have players, like we have players on our team this year that we like, but next year there might be 20 year old. They might have, they might not have the opportunity that they would like with us. Uh, and then we'll have that discussion with these players and making sure that, you know what, if, if Hearst is not the destination because of that particular reason, then we're, we're going to find you a great place. Like we're going to work with you because in the end you, you, you got to assist the player and, in, in, in his player development. And, and then when you, you, when you, you recruit him, you want, you want to be a help for him even though he's still not on your team. And even when I'll speak to college, even if he's not on my team, I will still speak about that kid yeah. and try to promote him, even though he's not with me, because you know what? It's not because he's not with me that I don't find him a good player. It's just that sometimes the numbers just were the numbers. Right. Yeah. And, and, and guys, again, that's why it's just so important to like be involved with the good people in this game. Um, Like that's, you know, awesome what Jonathan just said and what he does. And you heard somebody say the same thing about RC like last week, right? Like I told you guys, like, you know, like I deal with some really good people in this game and that's why I want to open this up to you guys. You know, I want you guys to ask your questions because like there's, there's very good people in this game, you know, Um, you know, and you want to deal with them. So, you know, like that's, yeah, that, that's awesome, Jonathan. And like I said, like, no joke, like RC like said the, you know, or so, somebody said the same thing about RC like last week, like they, you know, put in a comment that, you know, he helped them even though he wasn't with them anymore. And they said, Hey, when you, you know, with RC, you get a coach for life, like, you know, exact same thing that you just said. And um, yeah, guys, I, I guess I'm just very happy to be able to open this, you know, this up to you guys. Um, Robert wants to know. So, if you're a 2005 birth year, do you have two years left? Yes, Robert, yeah. you have you have two years left. It goes December 31st is the cutoff, so you can't play. You know, like, let's say you're a guy that is gonna that's 20 years old, and then you turn 21 in November, you can't start the season as a 20 year old turn 21 in November. Like, it's it's um, it December 31st is the cutoff. It goes by the birth year. So, yes, a 2005 will have two years left. Um, you know, and then there's, there's some leagues that will let 21 year olds play. So they would have three years left. Um, I think, you know, like obviously like the GMHL, that's 21 year olds play. 
Yeah, um, junior C then, leagues is the same. Area. Yeah, there might. Yeah, I think there's some. Yeah, you said junior C leagues. I think there's some junior B leagues too. But I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think some of those leagues that are Hockey Canada leagues that allow the 21 year olds to play, like so 2003 birth year next year, you have to play for them as a 20 year old, right? Like you can't come in brand new as 21, can you? Like I'm I, not I completely sure about that. So okay, yeah, I think some of them you have to play for them as a 20 year old in order to be eligible to play at 21, or you have to at least play in the league. Um, yeah, something, yeah, you know, something like that. Um, you know, to be honest, I don't, I don't deal much with those, with those levels in Canada. Um, but, uh, but yeah, goes by birth year. Um, but yeah, guys. Uh, yeah. Wow. We're already, already caught. I told you this is going to go quick. We're already coming up on an hour. So just, um, just so you know, like Robert, if he's a 2000 fine, that means he has two years left. So yeah, um, it doesn't matter where he was b- uh, born in 2005. He has two, t- like he has two years left. Any 04s have one year, 05, two years, 06, three years. Uh, it's really every t- everything is cut off by December uh, 31st. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, yeah, like I said, we're already coming up on an hour. Um, so in terms of Scout Central, we did the same thing last week with RC Like. Um, Jonathan is on Scout Central. If you guys want to stay connected with Jonathan, add the pl- we're going to go with the player tag Jacks. J A C K S add the player tag Jax to your profile. Jonathan will be able to search the tag and see everybody that's got that tag. And again, make sure your profiles are standing tall. They're up to date, you know, with, you know, where you're going to be this summer and everything. And just in general, where, you know, where your whereabouts this way, you know, if Jonathan is, you know, scouting somewhere and, you know, he pulls up, the you know pulls up the list and goes on your profile and sees that you're there he's able to pull you aside talk to you face to face introduce you know introduce himself to you guys and you know and talk again like this whole thing is built on community we're trying to do this a better way a more effective way um you know and scout central is going to enable you know teams to do things that they cannot do with an email list they cannot do it with a recruitment form on their website so again we're just you know it's all part of the you know it's a one of the community tools um, you know, to better connect everybody. And yeah, again, guys, also the, the discord server hop into the Swan hockey <laughs> discord server. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of really cool things in the works guys. And, um, so yeah, just keep, you know, we're here every Thursday night, bring your friends, you know, invite your friends to the Facebook group, invite your friends to the discord server. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if you guys are enjoying this this stuff and you're finding value in this, um, yeah, all I ask is just, you know, t- t- tell a couple friends about it, share it on social media, uh, make sure you subscribe to, you know, to YouTube, um, you know, yeah, and you know, there's tons of free content across the um, Swan Hockey social media platforms. If anybody's looking for a more personalized experience, there are paid services on the website. Um, you know, if anybody's interested in that, but yeah, keep, keep, you know, keep hanging out with us guys. Keep, you know, like, again, there's tons of free content. I want you guys to use it. I'm happy to open up this network to you guys. Um, if you guys have any last minute questions, throw it in here. Um, you know, last minute questions or comments. Shannon, Shannon just asked if a player is playing in showcases with a team that is part of the USPH already when watching players, does that impact your decision on whether you contact the player? Well, not at all. That's what I figured you'd say. (laughs) Yeah. I I don't think anybody's Shannon. I don't think there's really any, I don't think there's, you know, many coaches that are, that are worried about that. Um, You know, where things could get, where things could get dicey is so with, with Jonathan's league, with the NOJHL, it's part of hockey Canada. It's a hockey, it's a hockey Canada sanctioned league. So now, I imagine Jonathan that if you went to a showcase and there was somebody that was part of another hockey Canada, you know, part of the OJ or part of, you know, you know, part of another member organization in your own league, that's where you got to be careful about tampering and whatnot. But, but USPHL to hockey Canada, they're not, there's no type of agreement. Um, So it's everybody's fair game both ways. No, like if, if a player is, is, is part of the junior program, 
uh, that is the same level as us, we can't talk with that player because yes, it, it would be then tampering. But if uh, in the states, like players like DNA will talk with some of our players and vice versa, and 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 even even the SP ESPH, ESPHL is non-sanctioned. Uh, same thing as uh, as the NCDC and all that stuff. And that's an important thing, though. I haven't mentioned that, uh, Eric. But let's say that we also have a rule like that because we can pick up any players that play before September 31st. But if a player played in USPHL Premier or the NCDC or the EHL, a league that is non-sanctioned, yeah. um, then the we cannot pick up the player after September 31st. Yeah. It's a rule. Uh, 30th, 30th, September 30th. Uh, uh, September yeah. 30th, sorry. Yeah. So it's a rule with Hockey Canada. Like yeah. It's not a rule that we make ourselves. It's just a rule that we have. So, um, And I'm not sure if it's the same in USA Hockey, Eric. I have no clue. Like, uh, does the NA, can an, an any team pick up a, a player from the NCDC after September 30th? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's, okay. it's, o- it's only Hockey Canada that has that rule. Um, yeah. yeah. Where if you play past, uh, um, yeah, past September 30th, um, yeah, you're ineligible for us this season. Yeah. We got a good comment here. It's from anonymous <laughs> user. I know, I know, I, I remember the post. It's the same person I'm thinking of. I remember the post. Um, you know, his son actually, if it's the same person I'm thinking of, congratulations again. His son just committed, um, you know, NCAA Division Three. Um, you know, another great, uh, you know, another great example of, uh, you know, commitment. Um, but yeah, so yeah, for, uh, for the guys on YouTube, the Facebook comment just came in and said, my son got the first overtime winner against Jonathan for Powassan. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Great league. Great place. Places you know to play. Great people. So well, you probably know who that is just by who's <laughs> the overtime winner. You probably know exactly who it is. Yeah, for sure. Like it's, uh, you know what, Powassan has a good team and, uh, you know what, uh, Peter's a great guy. Uh, like uh, respect his players and all that stuff, and works hard for his players uh, to plays them after too. So uh, hats off to them. You know what they they did a good series. We knew it was a great series, but in the end, it's all about about uh, respecting each other. We would have loved to for your son to not score because we would have <laughs> loved to advance. And uh, but at the same time, uh, after the series, I called uh, Chris Dawson, uh, the GM of uh, Powassan, and I uh, congratulated him and. Uh, Told them, you know, best of luck for the rest of the series there. Yeah, no, that, that that's that's funny. That was a good comment to end the night on. Um, yeah, guys, awesome. Um, yeah, no, we'll see. Uh, we'll be back next Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, not going to tell you who it is yet. I'll tell you. We're, I'll tell you. We're going to Major Junior. I'm not going to tell you who it is yet. Um, look for the announcement probably within the next couple of days. But. Um, yeah, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us, Jonathan. Thanks again. Um, anything, yeah. any, any, anything else you wanted to say? No, it was a pleasure. Uh, anyway, any, anything. If anybody has any question, you can go through Eric, and I'll be uh, more than happy to answer any of them. So, all right, awesome, guys. Everybody have a great night, and I will see you guys soon. All right, great. Thanks.